In this video, we're going to discuss the law of cosines, right? We've already discussed the law of sines, and this is an alternative method for solving oblique triangles. Um, let's start with looking at this example here. It asks, can the triangles with the given information be solved using the law of sines? Remember, our law of sines says that if we have a triangle with sides or angles alpha, beta, and gamma, then we know that the sine of alpha divided by the side opposite, which is side A, equals the sine of beta over its opposite side B, and that should equal the sine of, sine of gamma over C, right? This is what our law of cosines actually, sorry, sines actually tell us. And so <clears throat> we wanna know if we could solve these triangles, right? Um, using the law of sines, right? Here I have a side, an included angle, and another side. And again, we call this an included angle because this angle is between the two sides that we are given. And then we have a side, side, side scenario here, right? But if I were to try to use my law of sines here, right, I would need to know at least an angle and its opposite side. Because I don't know any angle and its opposite side, we only have this angle right here, then I am not able to use my law of sines on this one here, right? So I'm going to say no for this one here. Um, when it comes to this triangle here, this is side, side, side. Again, I'm going to have to at least know at least two angles in one side or two sides in one angle in order for me to use the law of sines in order to help me um, solve a triangle. Well, I don't know any of these angles here, so I cannot use my law of sines to help me um, solve this triangle here. So what we're going to have to do is in each of these cases here, we will have to use the law of cosines, which we'll talk about now. And so our law of cosines. It states that if the triangle ABC is an oblique triangle with size A, B, and C, and angles alpha, beta, and gamma, let's go ahead and draw this triangle here. And of course, that is not um, my tool for me to draw. And there we go, right? Very bad triangle. So let's do better than that. And there it goes again. We're gonna pop this one alpha, beta, and gamma. That means across the triangle from this is side length A, this will be B, and this will be C. The law of um, cosines is going to start to look very similar to our Pythagorean theorem, right? Um, if we had a right triangle, and let's say that A was our hypotenuse, right? Then we would say that A squared, our hypotenuse squared, equals the length of one leg squared plus the length of the other leg squared, right? Or if it was C, it would be C squared equals A squared plus B squared, right? Everybody remembers A squared plus B squared equals C squared with the Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, <clears throat> whatever one that we call the hypotenuse is going to be on one side by itself squared, and the other two, the sum of the squares of the other two legs is on the other side of the equation for your Pythagorean theorem. Well, since this is not a right triangle, we have to make an adjustment, right? And that adjustment is going to be coming from this right here, minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of the angle that's opposite this uh side length that's on the side by itself, which is A. And the angle that's across the triangle from side length A is alpha. All right. And so this is our law of cosines, right? We can do this with B squared. We can isolate B squared on this side, which means we're going to have an A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of the angle opposite this angle that's isolated on one side by itself, which would be beta. Okay, and then we can do C squared equals A squared plus B squared, like the Pythagorean theorem, but we have to make an adjustment since this is not a right triangle, minus 2AB times the cosine of the side opposite the triangle from side C, which is gamma. So these three formula, they have, formulas, they have the same form. It just depends on which angle, um, which side length you have isolated, the side length that you have isolated, is going to um, 
the cos you're going to take the cosine of the angle that's opposite the triangle from that, right? So B theta, C gamma, and as I've said, A and alpha. And so let's look at an example. And again, these work when you have side angle side, which is the case in the example above, or side side side, right? It works for side angle side or when you're given three sides of a triangle. All right, and those cover all the cases of what we may have when we have oblique triangles. So let's look at an example, and this is the law of cosines, right? Um, and so we're going to look at this example here, which we have the coast, uh, we're gonna draw and solve the triangle in which alpha equals 40 degrees. Again, when I do these, I always um, just draw a, a generic triangle um, and we'll draw a generic triangle. All right, it may not look like this, but I don't know what the triangle looks like until I solve it completely, right? We know that the measure of angle alpha is 40 degrees, so I'm gonna put my 40 degrees there. B is 12 meters, I'm just gonna put the 12, and side length C, which is over here, is 20 meters, right? And so what we have here going on is a side angle and a side. And since I have a side angle and a side, I can't use my law of sines. Um, in fact, um, well, because I don't have this opposite side here, right? So you either need two sides and an angle that is not included to use your law of sines. Um, and so since that's not a case, we have to use our law of cosines here, right? And so... <clears throat> There are multiple things that we could try to find. Um, the thing that I'm going to try to find first, right? Remember, we don't know the measure of angle beta. We don't know the measure of angle gamma. And we don't know the length of side length A. So I've got to figure out which one I'm going to find first. And since uh, I have my angle alpha, um, I'm going to try to find my side length A because I have B and C here, right? This is B and this is C. So I know that side length A is going to come from me using this one, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of my alpha, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the values that I know for a fact, right? I know that B squared, B is 12. So I'm going to have a 12 squared. I know that C is 20. So plus 20 squared minus 2 times 12 times 20 cosine of 40 degrees. And so if I want to solve this uh, for A, all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. And notice here, I'm going to have A. Now, normally when we have a variable expression and we take the square root of a variable expression squared, we normally put on a plus or minus. I am not going to put on a plus or minus here because we are solving triangles. All right. Now, I need to put this in my calculator, right? At this point, we're going to need a scientific calculator. And so what I'm going to do, if I don't have a scientific calculator um, in general, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, the internet, right? I'm going to go to Google. And so what I'm going to do in Google is I'm going to type in scientific calculator, right? And so when I type in scientific calculator, this comes up, right? Type in scientific calculator, this comes up. I'm going to scroll down to here, which says um, Desmos scientific calculator, right? www.desmos.com. This has a graphic calculator, multiple calculators. I'm going to focus on the scientific calculator. And so I'm going to open that link. And this is what the Desmos scientific calculator looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just enter that expression into my calculator, right? So remember, it was the, let's remind ourselves of what expression that we're going to enter. It's the square root of that 12 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 12 times 20 times the cosine of 40. And so what we're going to do is we're going to enter that in one step, right? I'm going to do square root 12. And then I'm going to put squared by going to this a squared here um, plus 20 squared minus 2 times 12 times 20 times the cosine 
And notice here, since you see this degree here, it is currently in degree mode. If I click on this, it's gonna change it to radian mode. Well, I want it in degree mode, so I'm gonna keep this here, and I'm gonna put 40. I'm gonna close that, and it tells me my answer here is 13.277508. And so here, if you wanna to go to enter to get to your new line, and you'll see your answer here once more. And so that, uh-oh, you guys definitely did not see what I just did. And so <laughs> I am so sorry. And so on this calculator here, I'll do it quickly once again. I'm gonna do the square root. I'm gonna have 12 squared plus 20 squared minus two times 12 times 20 times my cosine function is here. And again, I was saying that degree is already um, highlighted. That's the default in Desmos. If you wanna do radians, you click on that and it'll give you your radian mode, right? But we're in degree mode, so I'm gonna click it so that I see degree. I'm gonna put my 40 in there. I can close my parenthesis here. And it tells me my answer. If I wanna tag that answer in, then I'm, or lock that answer in, I get 13.278 um, approximately as the length of angle, the met side length A. So I'm gonna write this here. We get 13.278, right? And so now I know this for a fact. I'm going to go back to my old school pencil here because I can see that a lot better. 13.278, right? And so now, now that we know that, we could use any method we like in order to help us get our angles here. For instance, now that I know this side opposite angle alpha is 13.278, now I open myself up to being able to use the law of sines, all right? I'm gonna caution you though. When you use the law of sines, remember when you have one angle, that's gonna give you the ambiguous case. And with the ambiguous case, you always have to see if an obtuse angle is a probable angle um, that may be one of the solutions to your solving of your triangle, right? To avoid that, if I could use the law of cosines, I'm gonna use the law of cosines because the law of cosines is always gonna have one triangle. It's always gonna give you one triangle if one triangle exists, right? So even though I can use the law of sines to find, for instance, angle beta or angle gamma, I'm not gonna use the law of sines. I'm gonna focus on using the law of cosines. And so let's go and use the law of uh, cosines once again in order to help us find the measure of angle beta. So let's find angle beta, the measure of angle beta. So if I wanna find the measure of angle beta, I'm gonna use the B squared formula form of my law of cosines, right? So that equals A squared plus B squared minus two. Oh, I messed that up. Um, that should be a C squared. A squared plus C squared minus two AC times the cosine of beta, right? So our goal is to find beta and we have B, A, and C. This is generally, and I'm gonna say this because we're not gonna look at an example in this video, but this is generally how we will start to solve using the side, side, side case, right? You'd have to find your angles, right? So you'd have all three of your sides. So you would have the B, the A, the C, and the A and C here. And you have to isolate your cosine function and then take your cosine inverse in order to you, for you to isolate this beta here. All right, so we know that our B is 12, so this would be a 12 squared equals my A squared was uh, that 13.278 squared. My C squared was the 20 squared minus 2 times the 13.278 times the 20 cosine of beta. All right, and so what I'm going to do now, I have access to a calculator. And I don't wanna do so, so many calculations. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try to get all these constants on one side, but I'm not gonna square them yet. I'm gonna leave them at, in their squared form. So I'm gonna subtract 13.278 from both sides, squared, right? And 20 squared from both sides. 
All right, that means they appear on my left side, left-hand side with minus signs in front of them. And when I subtract on this side, it cancels. When I subtract that on this side, it cancels. And so my right-hand side, I'm left with this. If I wanna isolate my cosine of beta, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative two times that 13.278 times 20. And so basically all of that cancels here. And that's what my cosine of beta equals, right? That 12 squared minus 13.278 squared minus 20 squared all over a negative two times 13.278 times 20, right? And so this is what I'm gonna put in my calculator, right? Now I know that my cosine function has a range, and that's an equal sign here. It has a range of negative one to negative one, right? So if I get a number that's not in between negative one and one, then I know that this is no solution, right? Um, and so let's go to our calculator in order to help us do this, right? And so I'm gonna enter this into my scientific calculator online, right? I'm gonna put a parenthesis, right? I'm gonna put the 12, that numerator, which was, let's review, 12 squared minus 13.278 squared minus 20 squared over two times 13.78 times 20, and that two is negative, all right? And so let's put this in our calculator. That'll be a 12, uh-oh, I messed that up. 12 squared minus. Now, you could use the answer feature in your calculator, all right? If you want to, you can. In fact, I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to put use this answer button, and I'm going to square it. And notice it put that to 13.277. So it doesn't use the rounded feature. It uses that part. Um, minus 20 squared. I'm going to close that parenthesis, right? So that was that numerator there. Now I'm going to divide. And what's nice here is they, they put it as a fraction, which is what it looked like on my paper. Now I'm going to put a negative 2. And, and a lot of TI calculators, there's a negative symbol. We use the minus symbol for that. But I'm going to open with a parenthesis because I have multiple things multiplied in my denominator. I'm going to, this is a negative or a minus sign in this calculator, right? So I'm going to have a negative 2. All uh, right, that's going to be multiplied by that 13.278. Oh, that's still the answer, the previous answer. So I'm going to use my answer feature, and that's going to be times 20. And I'm going to close my calculators, uh, my parentheses, and I see that I get 0.81395317, or uh, 1171, right? I can press enter, and it will lock that in, right? Now, since that number is between negative 1 and 1, I know that I can take the cosine inverse. In order to take the cosine inverse, right? Well, let me go ahead and write what that equals down, okay, on our actual uh, set of notes. And so on our notes, we know that the cosine of beta is approximately, it is approximately 0.814. Now, that's the approximation, right? So if I want to solve for beta, I have to undo the cosine. And in order for me to undo the cosine, I have to do the cosine inverse function. Now, when we did this with the sine function, remember your sine function would only give you an acute angle, right? Because sine is from negative power two to power, sine inverse is has a range between negative power two and power two. Those will always be acute angles, angles between zero and 90 degrees or zero and negative 90 degrees. They'd be acute if you think about in absolute value. That is why we always had to check to make sure if, whether an obtuse angle could be a part of our solution, which is why we had that ambiguous case. Well, my cosine inverse function does not have that same range as the sine inverse function. Its range is actually from zero to pi which is perfect, right? Our cosine inverse function goes from zero to pi, right? It goes any angle from here to here, right? Notice if it's in the first quadrant, it's acute. If it's in the second quadrant, it is obtuse. And so the cosine inverse function, because of its property, it will give us the, the actual um, obtuse angle. So we don't have that ambiguous case anymore. And so my answer to my cosine function will always be one triangle, and it's going to 
give you the obtuse or the actual acute angle, right? So let's find the cosine inverse of that 0.814. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that answer feature again. All right. In Desmos, we go here to function. This gives us a lot of functions that we've uh, learned about before, right? I want to use the cosine inverse function, so I'm going to do that here. And instead of, and then I'm going to go back to main so I can get and input my information. I'm going to use the answer feature, or you can put 0.814 here. I'm going to put my answer, close my parentheses, and I see that that's 35.516. I can lock it in. And I get 35.516. That is an angle me measure, and my angles are measured in degrees. So the measure of angle beta, and let's get our pen. That's 35.511 degrees, right? And so if I go back to my picture here, I know beta, 35.511. 511 degrees, and if I already know that get, uh, alpha was 40 degrees, then I can find the measure of angle gamma, 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 wow. All right, the measure of angle gamma is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. I subtract off that 40 degrees for alpha, that 35.111, uh, 0.511 degrees for my uh oh, that's 31.516, not 511. If you do the 0.8, so this is 31.516 here because I used the exact value, the answer feature on my calculator. When I did this before, I didn't use the answer feature. And so here, oh goodness, where is my pen? Uh oh, I guess I can't do that right now. There we go. Sorry about that. And so you're going to get that gamma is approximately 104.5 degrees approximately. All right, if you want to put in a calculator and get the exact value, I'm going to do that really quickly without showing you on gizmos. One, 104.484. And this is not wanting to work. Wow, my eraser. All right, and that is the measure of angle gamma, right? So we got 48, 104. 0.484 degrees. All right, that is the law of cosines, right? Once you start using the law of cosines, just continue to use it. It's only going to re, uh, produce one triangle each and every time because the cosine inverse function is so good that it will give us both an obtuse or an acute angle. And so we don't have that ambiguous case like we did when we had when we were given one angle and we had to use the law of sines. This concludes this video. We'll get to an, uh, an application example later, but this concludes this video. See you next time.